Hello, I'm Richard with ev for You Custom Conversions, and welcome to this week's edition of the EV Answer Man. This week, we're going to answer a question from Mark in Tucson, Arizona, who asks, what about heating and cooling? And so we'll talk about uh, the heater and air conditioning setups on electric conversion. So let's get to it. First off, let's talk about a uh, heating. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about uh, heating first and then we'll get into uh, air conditioning. But there's two different types of heat systems that are used depending on the vehicle in question. And one is uh, vehicles like the uh, air-cooled Porsches and Volkswagens, um, a non-liquid cooled vehicle. That's going to use one type of heater. And then liquid cooled vehicles, which are most common, uh, we'll discuss how we um, handle the heating in one of those. But first off, uh, the non-liquid cooled vehicles like the uh, Porsche and VWs. And so, uh, we'll talk about the schematic here first, and then we'll, we'll show you some photos. So, what we want to do in, in, in a big picture sense is we're going to tie into the existing heater system in the vehicle. And uh, with the Volkswagens and the Porsches, there's a couple ways to do that. Um, on the Volkswagen, we've, uh, uh, under the back seat, entered the heat system there, inducted it that way. Uh, you can also duct cold air in underneath the bonnet to just the defroster portion. Uh, that works better than trying to, to heat the windshield with, with hot air. And most of your modern air, uh, defrosters use the air conditioning to defrost the windshield. And so we'll s split the system and let just cold ambient air defrost the windshield and use the heater to heat the inside of the vehicle. And so you can come up with your own ducting style and everything. I won't get into that. Everybody's got their own uh, ideas there. And in the future, if you're interested, we, we can go down that path. But just a general overview in this week. And so how is that wired up then? Well, starting with our 12 volt battery, you can go through a fuse and go to a switch. Now, you can use a switch that is, you know, separate, uh, or you can hook it up in such a way that when you use the stock heating controls, it activates the switch, however you want to do it. But that switch, when activated, is going to uh, start and power a fan, a 12 volt fan, and it's going to also uh, activate a, a, a contactor. And then the heating element itself in the heater gets its power from your traction pack. So when you turn on the heater with the switch, contactor closes, you have pack voltage going through your heating element, fan comes on to blow that heat. And so extremely simple. You can make it as integrated into the vehicle as you'd like. I've seen some beautiful jobs. And so that's it in a nutshell. So let's take a look at, at, at one, you know, uh, the components, what they look like. Okay, here are the main components for a non-liquid cooled heater. And so we have the contactor that we discussed, 12 volt coil. And that's going to uh, then switch your pack voltage through that contactor. And this is the heater. It's a ceramic heater. And attached to the back of that ceramic heater is our 12 volt box fan. That will provide the airflow. Little thermostat right there. Thermostatic switch. 
And so this is the, uh, the bare bones. This is the, the element. And the fan. And your contactor. Now we house this in a nice housing with a duct work and so forth um, to complete the package. But these are the components involved. There's uh, several sources of availability for this type of thing on the internet. And uh, you can make your own. Lots of avenues to go down. But that is the heater system for a non-liquid cooled vehicle. Now let's take a look at uh, what's required for a liquid cooled vehicle. You'll note that all of these have very similar components. In the uh, liquid cooled vehicle we're still going to have our 12 volt source that we're going to use. We're going to go through a fuse. We're going to have a switch. And this time when we flip the switch it's going to activate a pump which is going to circulate our coolant, our uh, mixture of ethyl glycol and water, through the system. And so at the same time that the pump comes on, our contactor is closed, and power from our traction pack is going to go through the contactor, through a thermal switch, through the heating element in the heater, and there's our complete circuit. Now, I'll show you the schematic for the uh, coolant flow in a moment. So this is a heating element inside of a little reservoir. And so it's heating the liquid. And then that liquid is going to be cycled through the car's stock heater core. So where on the non-liquid cool, this was the element from our ceramic heater. In this case, it's just a, another heating element that's going to be heating uh, the fluid in a tank. And we need to circulate that fluid through the tank and through our heater core in the passenger compartment. So let's go take a look at that. Okay, here we have my crude drawing. And this is basically the uh, the fluid, the coolant um, route. You're going to have a fill port. That's where you're going to fill the system. That needs to be the highest point in the system. That's where you'll bleed air out of the system. And so the rest of the system is you've got the heated tank and that's where our heating element will be inside that tank and a pump and then this is the stock heater core which is you know integral to the the vehicle and so when you remove the internal combustion engine uh, those uh, lines will go through the uh, firewall of the vehicle and then into the passenger department to the heater core you're going to remove those and you'll still have those two lines there. You're simply going to attach those two lines and add these other components. Very simple, works very well. Uh, these tanks, because they're a, a smaller system, um, they heat up very quickly. Unlike a, an automobile, which has to heat, get heat from the, the engine block, heat up, uh, you know, that closed loop. This is a much smaller closed loop, has the ability to heat rapidly. You can buy these uh, tanks with uh, one or two uh, heater elements. And so depending on the size of the vehicle that you're trying to heat, you can you, you know, get one uh, sized appropriately. So um, I'll see if I can dig up a photo of one. I don't have one of these systems laying around right now. But let me see if I have a photo of one installed in a vehicle. Uh, to kind of give you an idea. So now, let's talk about air conditioning.
Okay, now for the air, condi air conditioning system. And since the question was asked uh, by Mark in uh, Tucson, Arizona, I'm sure he's more interested in the air conditioning than he is in the heater. Um, again, you can see a lot of similarities. We've got our 12 volt system, which we're going to uh, incorporate in that we're going to use a switch to activate a, uh, a contactor. And again, you can use a switch in the stock system that uh, is used to, to control the compressor. A lot of vehicles have a separate switch that allows you to turn on and off the compressor. And those wires went to the, the clutch on the compressor motor. And so we can simply tie right into that. When you turn on the AC system, it activates the contactor and we then have power go from our traction pack through a dialogue, diode into our controller and that controller then powers the uh, motor compressor uh, unit. Uh, we use a master flux um, AC system made by Tecumseh uh, they make a lot of different units. Uh, they're real popular in, in stationary applications and uh, applications such as big rigs and so forth. Uh, a lot of places have no idling laws and so they use these systems to uh, cool their sleepers and the cabs. And they're actually available I believe from 12 volts to 600 volt systems. Um, we size it based on the size of our pack. A common one we use for our 146 volt uh, traction pack, we will use a controller that's good from 90 to 160 volts. So that allows for a fully charged pack and it also allows plenty of margin on the under, other end uh, for uh, voltage sag uh, under load. And so, again, very simple circuit. And then here's the, uh, the Freon route. It's going to go from your compressor through your condenser to your evaporator and, and back. And so, uh, very, very simple. Uh, the components aren't cheap. The heaters are far less expensive than the AC system. And when people ask us about installing AC, you know, on a vehicle they're considering, my first question is always, does the vehicle have air conditioning now? Um, it's not that big a deal to add air conditioning to a vehicle that had air conditioning as a uh, internal combustion powered vehicle. But if you want to add air conditioning to a vehicle that never had air conditioning, uh, you not only have the cost of the uh, components uh, in regards to the conversion, but you're going to have to add all the other components uh, into the vehicle. And so you can look at a, you can be up in the $4,000 range. And so that's a little spendy in my mind, whereas you can get a uh, vehicle that already has air conditioning in it for your donor car if you want air conditioning in the finished product and for two thousand uh, dollars have air conditioning and so there you have it that's the schematic uh, let me show you some footage of uh, the components and of the unit uh, installed in the vehicle okay here are the main components uh, used in the uh, conversion uh, of the air conditioning to be combat compatible with our electric vehicles. And so instead of running it off a motor and taking horsepower from the electric motor and using uh, inefficient uh, rotary uh, pump that's used in automobiles, they're not too concerned about efficiency. Uh, they're running uh, only about 13% efficient uh, with an internal combustion engine anyway. So what we use is a 
like what you have in your refrigerator or freezer. Um, it's a, a compressor and motor in one sealed unit. And this then is going to be powered by our traction pack. And so this is what's going to uh, do that. Our traction pack voltage will come in over here. And that will be switched through a relay. And we also will be using a diode so that as we accelerate the vehicle and, we, and our pack sags, that these caps will not want to feed back, or they will want to feed back, but they won't feed back uh, to our um, uh, traction pack and thus uh, blowing this fuse, which was a problem they had uh, in the early days of this setup. So, um, and we'll show you the, the, the contactor, not relay, but basically what it is. But anyway, we'll show you that um, and, and show you all the wiring. Just wanted to show you the components used to, to start with. So here's the motor and compressor. Uh, under here is just uh, the terminals that these uh, three wires connect to, and then they connect here on the... Um, controller and then right here on this side there's a thermal switch and that's what these two wires and this uh, plug go to which will plug right here and so quite simple like everything else on an electric car we'll have our power in we'll have our power out we'll have our thermostatic control and then your um, plumbing for the air conditioning which is already in the vehicle uh, we simply install the compressor and the electronics and we'll take it to the air conditioning shop they will connect and charge the system so we'll show you how to do that okay here we have the air conditioning controller in place you can see here, I think, the um, this is the relay, and so here's the power going into the relay. I have the other side disconnected right now, so that while they're hooking up the uh, plumbing, the Freon system, that they don't have any issues bumping a switch or anything. So it's temporarily disconnected on that side of the relay. But anyway, it'll go through the relay, through the diode, into the control board. Here's the negative side. And so on the opposite side here is where the compressor motor attaches with the thermal switch. So there's the thermal switch right there. And there's the three wires connect to the board have it in a loom so it's nice and black and just kind of blends in you don't really see it but it will fit right there okay this is the air conditioning uh, compressor and controller installed uh, it still needs to be plumbed so it's off to the air conditioning shop for that but this is the, uh, the unit installed. Well, we thank you for the question. And I hope that answered it sufficiently. And we appreciate your watching the EV Answer Man. And if you have a question, you can email us at info at evforyounow.com. We'll be happy to get back to you. Uh, we will get back to you immediately uh, through email and then we perhaps may feature that question in our next segment of the EV Answer Man. So once again, I'm Richard and I appreciate you watching and we hope that you have uh, uh, all the success in the world on your own conversion and if there's anything we can do to help.
Let us know. Thank you.